Hello everyone, welcome to another video and I'm very excited about this video because in this video I'm going to show about the seven projects that you can do to enhance your DevOps skills and take them to the next level. Certifications are very good if you're just getting started but I think gone are those days you know 2017 18 where you just needed one certification or a couple of certifications to just land a job but i think in current market everyone has a certificate right so interviewers are looking for something you know which you have done hands-on on and uh, devops is a skill which includes a lot of tools a lot of skill sets so it's very challenging to find the right uh, hands-on projects to do right so in this video i'm going to show the seven projects that you can do to take your devops skills to the next level so i've laid these seven projects in such a way that you know they will cover cloud infrastructure as code uh, ci cd tools kubernetes docker and solution designing uh, because in a day-to-day -day job a devops engineer does all these things right so that's why it becomes very important to cover all these aspects and i'm sure once you do all these seven projects your skill set will definitely improve let's dive right into it okay so i leave a link of this uh, particular blog that i just wrote uh, in the description below so feel free to check it out but i'll use this to just go through all those seven projects that uh, you know i'm going to show which will make you a good devops engineer so the first project is you know very close to my heart because I use this project whenever you know uh, for example earlier I was majorly working on AWS and then when I got into Google then uh, you know I had to learn uh, Google Cloud and the related technologies so then I knew the architecture uh, as a whole that what I want to achieve so for example you know I needed to run some kind of application uh, in a uh, VM in Google Cloud it's a compute engine and then I have to you know make it globally accessible using a load balancer then I wanted to add a DNS there and then you know just hit the DNS and see whether it's working or not and try to mimic whether one you delete a VM and all those things so just you test the order scaling capabilities as well so this is a very I would say basic project that you can do to get started because this involves you know a lot of things for example you set up a vm you know you can use managed groups in google cloud or auto scaling groups in aws and then you know in the back end there will be a lot of vms uh, and then create some rules uh, right for example min of 2 max of 10 try to dis uh, you know hit it with some traffic and see how the auto scaling is working then create a load balancer make the back end as a as the managed instance group or eventually the VMs and then have a dummy DNS and uh, in cloud DNS or route 53 whatever uh, and then point it to the load balancer and uh, so this project basically will just uh, you know give you a good understanding cloud as a whole um, right because you are experimenting with a lot of things ranging from network services compute services uh, load balancing services auto scaling services and all this will give you a good idea and it has a lot of real world applications for example amazon uses it flipkart uses it or any other major e-commerce websites uses it uh, right to just do auto scaling on the fly etc and uh, basically you'll gain all these good understanding like how does a web server deployment works cloud computing concepts networking scalability as i mentioned above as well and uh, with each of the products projects what i have done is i have try to give you a link of how you can get started so for example you know uh, you can get started for free uh, in AWS AWS Azure I will definitely recommend uh, GCP because you know it's the best out there for uh, any beginner who is just uh, you know getting a hang of the cloud and the related technologies then look into load balancing documentations etc so this can be your first project second project is whatever you just created on the top this entire thing try to replicate the same using terraform because in real world we hardly use you know click ops or go to the console and then click button and then create something right in the real world it is an uh, infrastructure as code tool so terraform is the de facto standard for it so go ahead and then uh, use terraform to just automate the entire deployment so you will create resources like uh, 
uh, DNS, load balancers, managed instance groups, compute uh, engines, uh, instance template, etc. Uh, so you know all these things uh, you'll create using Terraform, and then you'll get a good understanding of how uh, you know you do it. And companies use this entire setup, this exact setup, for their production workloads as well. So once you do this or achieve this using Terraform. It will be a very good exercise uh, for you and it will give you a good understanding of how Terraform is used for day-to-day -day development in organizations. So again, here are some of the resources that you can check out. And the next is, okay, Terraform, maybe you would have installed in your local machine or some VM and then you would have ran Terraform in it, plan apply. But the idea is to automate the entire thing. That's what a DevOps engineer do, right? They build pipelines. So what you do is, uh, in this third project, create a Git repository, maybe GitLab, GitHub, whatever, and then push your Terraform code there, and then build a pipeline it, uh, using Jenkins, right? It can be any other tool. I've ch taken Jenkins because it's heavily used in organizations, but uh, you can take GitHub Actions as well, uh, right? Which is, again, uh, very popular. So what you do is basically you put your code in Terraform whenever a developer, uh, you know, does any change to Terraform, Jenkins automatically picks it uh, up using webhooks, etc., and then it will run Terraform in it, plan apply on your behalf, right? So this is again very good uh, exercise if you want to understand how infrastructure as code pipelines are built, and this is very important because you will hardly see uh, Terraform being run from local machines, etc., because there are multiple people in an organization, and they all use Terraform for creating or provisioning infrastructure, so you know, these pipelines become very important. And uh, you will learn a lot of things like version control, how does automation work, some principles of CI, CD. These are the resources that you can check out to get started. Uh, now the fourth one is, uh, again, very important because nowadays nothing works without, uh, you know, containers. So what you can do is you, cre you can create a simple Docker file and uh, you can use that Docker file to create an image and then you just take that image and then deploy it to Kubernetes. Now, it can be a very simple Flask or a Python application. It can be a Node.js or Express application, and you just containerize it, and then you deploy it to Kubernetes using kubectl commands or Helm commands, right? So you don't have to like uh, go too deep in Helm, etc., but just gain an understanding of what all these tools are, right? But yeah, I think for this project, if you just go ahead and then use kubectl to deploy your image, I think uh, that will give you a good understanding of how an image is built and then how it is uh, deployed to Kubernetes. You can use managed providers like uh, Google, Compu uh, Google Kubernetes Engine, GKE, and then you can deploy your images there. It's very easy to get started with GKE, uh, right? Or you can even install Docker for desktop on your machine as well. These are some of the links that you can check out to get started. Uh, with Docker and uh, Kubernetes. Now, again, the idea is same that is with Terraform, you hardly run kubectl commands or Helm from your local machine to deploy something. You can do it in dev, but not in production, right? So that's why what you do is you build a CICD pipeline for deploying your applications uh, and at the end of the day, those Docker images. So basically, this is what the pipeline will look like. Our developer checks in the code to GitHub, Jenkins picks it up, pushes the image to Docker Hub, and then that image will be deployed to GK, right? Or any Kubernetes uh, offering out there. This is very important because uh, this, again, just like the infrastructure as code pipeline, is like the de facto in organizations. And if you do this, this will give you a really, really good understanding of the entire ecosystem of Kubernetes deployments, how it is done, how revisions happen, etc. You can check out some of these tools to get started. And uh, the sixth one is related to Kubernetes deployment, but uh, here I have used Jenkins, which basically, you know, is a push-based mechanism, right? But GitOps as a concept, I love it, and I'm a big proponent of GitOps, and that's what I recommend most of my, you know, customers to adopt, because Going forward, this is what will be used, and this is the cloud-native approach to do CI/CD deployments in Kubernetes, right? So I built a whole playlist of uh, for you know learning about Argo CD, which is a GitOps tool. So you can check it out 
here and learn uh, so this is a very in-depth uh, tutorial that I built and uh, the architecture diagram that you are seeing you can check out the tutorial number five over here in which I cover the entire uh, you know end-to-end -end deployment from github to uh, GKE cluster using Argo CD it's a long video but uh, I'm sure if you watch it till the end you'll definitely gain a lot of uh, good insights about Argo CD uh, but again coming to GitOps it's a very uh, it's relatively a new tech but if you learn uh, Argo CD or there's another tool called flux which again adopts the same GitOps principle uh, it will again be very beneficial for you if you are trying to become a DevOps engineer so uh, these are some of the resources that you can check out to you know just uh, do a deployment using Argo CD and the seventh one is a little bit advanced but I still want you to give it a shot because in this one what you'll do is you'll create multiple Kubernetes clusters in multiple regions and then you will use a single global load balancer to send the traffic to those GK clusters and then test how they all work right so this is basically a kind of cloud architect level thing but again if you do this you will learn a lot of things from you know multiple gk clusters how does dr how can dr happen networking system design and all those things so i want you to persist and reach till this uh, seventh project because all your learnings from the uh, you know previous seven projects will come in handy here and you know this is very exciting as well when i I was starting out I tried this and you know uh, I was very excited <laughs> you know just seeing like I had a VPN in my local and I was like okay let me uh, use a US VPN and then the traffic was going to US uh, uh, West uh, right and I was happening to see the container pop uh, you know uh, echoing the message okay traffic is being served from US first and then I switched my VPN to Europe then you know the traffic was going to this GK EU cluster and then uh, that message was popping up that you know this traffic is being served from the GK cluster running in Europe and I was very happy to see that and you know I can't express the feeling of how happy I was uh, then so I want you to try the same and you know uh, because you learn a ton uh, if you implement this particular thing and these are some of the resources now this can be achieved in other cloud providers as well but uh, these are some of the links that you can check out for implementing this in Google Cloud and uh, yeah I think uh, these are all the seven projects that I want you to do hands-on uh, now again I am not diving into the details and you know of all these projects but if you persist and go through all these projects I am sure that you will come out as a much more skilled and uh, mature DevOps engineer and then uh, you know you'll gain a lot of uh, good understanding of the entire DevOps ecosystem now one important aspect is once you're doing these projects showcase it in github right and put a link of uh, these github projects that you have done in your resume because I am uh, you know constantly talking to a lot of aspiring DevOps engineers or freshers who want to become uh, or are already in DevOps but you know want to go to the next level that's why that's what I recommend to them right and I I'm getting a lot of messages like hey a lot of people are doing it but believe me not a lot of people are out there which are doing this right so my recommendation will be go through this entire seven projects I know it will be hard it might take three months etc but I'm sure if you go through these seven projects and show a little bit of persistence I'm sure you know it will definitely help you to become a good DevOps engineer and maybe land you your dream DevOps job and you would have seen I've just given links right so because at the end of the day a DevOps engineer will not uh, you know get all these things laid out right we almost every time go through the documentation and then research things experiment it some things work some things don't and we do a lot of hit and trials what is working what is not and then finally eventually maybe after a week or two depending on the complexity of the solution we implement it and then you know that's the aha moment for us so it might take some time for you to uh, build all these seven projects and some of them you might not even you know fully complete which is okay right but the whole idea is just to get in that mindset of you know going through all these architectures that I just presented so that you know the end-to-end -end of uh, how 
you know our day to day of a devops engineer look like so feel free to you know ping me on linkedin and you haven't connected with me on linkedin feel free to uh, connect with me uh, i accept all the uh, requests so uh, feel free to pay, uh, drop me a message that you are facing these issues etc and if you haven't subscribed to my uh, you know newsletter uh, you can subscribe it uh, i will uh, drop a link of that uh, in the description below and uh, happy learning and i'm sure uh, you know you will definitely achieve what you are set out to do so thank you so much i hope you would have liked this video if you have liked this video you will also like this video in which i talk about the six months devops or cloud engineer roadmap do check it out hit a like button and share it with your friends thank you so much until then you get to live make the most out of it